I finally got to watch Lisha beat the uprising on Netflix and oh, it was worth my time. Big kudos to all the cast, the crew, the directors, the producers and every person that had put that project together. It was indeed worth every bit of it. This video is not targeted to talking about the technicalities that have to do with movie making at all, but to appreciate the fact that the Yoruba community have over time and over the years intentionally helped retell the tales of their ancestors. I am so happy about these examples that the Yoruba community are setting. Now to Li Shabi, the uprising movie. This movie started off, you know, with focus on oil empire, the Alafin of Foyo's exploits and terrible deeds by his warriors. And one wouldn't have thought that Li Shabi would come in as strong, you know, given how the movie eventually ended. So I'm also commending the fact that the suspense was there and the prediction level was low. So it was indeed a good one. Also, also, I have personally had an opportunity to hear about the tale of Lishabi when I visited Abel Kuta, when I visited Olumoro in Abel Kuta um, two years ago with my daughters. And during our tour, we were told of the tale of Lishabi and we actually stood at his garden. Yeah, we actually got to stand, you know, we're actually at this garden. So it felt so real. And that, as a matter of fact, that was the week of the Lishabi festival. So every Egba person, every Egba man or woman might know the story of Lishabi, the great warrior. Who knew he was actually a farmer? Now, there's something I also observed. I don't know if any other person observed it, but... As a spiritualist and as a traditionalist, I observed it and I'm going to call it out. And that is the introduction of the four elements. When he introduced, I mean he, Lishabi, when he introduced those four beings that were going to teach them to prepare for the war, who observed that those four beings represented fire, water, earth and air? Well, seriously, who else saw that? And I'm glad. So you see... The ancestors really, really were very empowered back in the day. They honestly really were empowered. Now, this also brings me to saying this to creatives on the space, particularly Igbo creatives. I think with the examples that the Yoruba community have over the years, intentionally, painstakingly as well, put out good movies about their ancestors. I think it is time that we Igbos picked up on this example. You know, it's enough. I mean, I feel it's enough with all the love tales and all that. It's not, life is not really about all that at the end of the day. I think it's time for us to begin to tell the tales of our ancestors. And then it brings me to the fact that there is a movie Mazi Divya just recommended on his Facebook. It's called Akaraka Obanje. Um, on YouTube anyway. So he's recommended that movie. I am going to see it and I'm hoping it's a good movie. But at the same time, I think, I honestly think it is time that Igbo creatives did something similar as our Yoruba brothers are doing. So like I said, this post is not to talk about technicalities and all that. This post is also not to make any comparisons back and forth, but to applaud and appreciate everybody who's doing a great work at pro progressing, right? And bringing to life and retelling the tales of our ancestors. Thank you. You all are amazing. You are doing a fantastic job. I appreciate you.